Dr. Bill Moylan. Okay, a little bit about our speaker tonight. Our speaker has, uh, is a project manager with Open Systems Technology. He's been involved with IT for 18 years, and uh, 13 years he's worked as a project manager on both sides of the fence. So it's very interesting when you're working on one side, you can always critique the other side, but when you work the other side, the old saying comes up about the grass is greener on the other side. <laughs> Having been on both sides is something that a wonderful thing to grow up with, so our speaker has that advantage. Um, our speaker has a, is a graduate from uh, Hope College, and he enjoys bicycling, enjoys basketball, volleyball, and being with his family. Please give a warm welcome to this evening's speaker, Paul Warren. See if I can get this thing turned on here. First, I'd like to thank everybody for coming down and spending some time uh, together tonight. Hopefully, we can talk about some project management and get things rolling here. I know it's, uh, I think this is the last dinner meeting here before the summer break, so school's out after this, uh, <laughs> after this talk. Um, you might have to bear with me on a few things during this presentation. I'm trying a few things out that I haven't really tried before, so we'll see how it goes. But hey, what's the worst that could happen? Um, my topic tonight is on creativity and innovation in project management. Let me breathe. Um, <laughs> how's that? Maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Who's the code? Cool. All right, that's good. I'm sweating less. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, I'm Paul Warner. I'm PMP certified. I work for OST. I uh, do project management consulting. Um, a lot of different types of IT projects. Uh, I've been a project manager for about 13 years. Um, one thing, I did put my email and phone number on here. I'm trying something, there's a contest later on in my discussion, and if you want to participate, if you have a phone that is either text capable or email capable, uh, you can plug in my phone, or my phone and email, and uh, I'll be asking a question. If you text me back or email me the answer, uh, that'll be, uh, there's great prizes, trust me, they're incredible. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, just to note, I'm originally from Detroit, so imported from Detroit. I'm living in Grand Rapids right now, uh, but I grew up uh, on this side of the state, so I'm glad to come back and uh, follow the Great Lakes chapter of the PMI. I usually attend West Michigan PMI events, uh, which are over in Grand Rapids, so check it out if you're online. Uh, it's only a short drive. Um, some of the goals that I have for my presentation, uh, I'd like to talk about what my goals are. Um, first of all, <laughs> this topic is a very soft topic. Uh, creativity and project management, it has to do with your attitude, it has to do with your behavior, it has to do uh, with softer topics versus I'm not doing a very hard, uh, lots of equations or processes that we're going to get in the nuts and bolts with. So just be aware, this is one of those soft conversations, but my goal is to be able to provide some concrete examples, some actual tangible behaviors, and maybe I can inspire you to be a little bit more creative, um, maybe give you some techniques or just some ideas, maybe just trigger that uh, thought in your head of how you can bring some more creativity uh, to your project management uh, delivery uh, from day to day. Um, the PMBOK. So obviously, I think I've got a copy of it here. Um, it's kind of one of the jokes I like to say is just, you know, someone please turn in the project in the PMBOK and turn to the chapter on creativity. You know, <laughs> Cr crickets. You know, it's not in there. There's no chapter on creativity in project management. Um, um, there's the concept of the left brain and the right brain. Uh, the idea that some people are more left brain oriented, others are more right brain, where the left side of the brain is more logical, 
um, more analytic, calculating. On the right side of the brain is more creative, maybe more emotional connected, maybe more artistic. Um, I really like this picture. It's from a Mercedes ad. They did three different ones here. I got three different ones. I really like them. Just illustration of uh, the idea of left and right brain. So um, I'm going to attempt to draw something up here, which is a challenge. Um, just to illustrate something on this topic, um, here's, let's see here. Here's my brain. Here's a brain. Uh, let's just take this as the entire population of your company that you work for, your organization. And when you think of everyone in your organization, um, where would you say IT folks are more likely to be found? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Yes. So let's see, if, if this is your org, and let's say this is IT, within that organization. Again, this is just some generalization. There's, there's exceptions to the rule. Uh, so your IT is generally your more logical, uh, your more analytical type folks uh, that you see walking around uh, within the organization. Now within IT, if you just think of everyone within IT that you know, uh, it's my observation that project managers are even the more organized, the more uh, structured, the more uh, likely to follow up on something. Uh, I, the, even the left side, I would even call that the left side within <laughs> IT, our project managers. Uh, so um, I call it the left of the left brain. Uh, those are the, uh, that's what you see a lot of project managers. So I kind of take this whole space here and, and, and to me that I call that, that that's the, that's the creativity gap that I find in project management sometimes. Um, again, it's not in the PMBOK. Uh, most project managers tend to the left of the left. Uh, so that's something that, that's out there. Um, here's a picture of oil and water. Um, project management, oil, water, and creativity. So one of my goals in this talk is to just kind of Combine the two here. Let's put some oil and water together. Let's shake it up for the next half hour, 45 minutes, and uh, see how we can combine project management and creativity. <laughs> um, one thing that really interests me is, uh, is project management as a profession. Um, what's the common certification for project managers? What's the second P? Professional. Professional, right, we're pros. So are we, are we acting like pros? How do you become a pro at, at being a project manager? What differentiates a project manager? Um, so this person's sleeping, I'm saying, what, how's your career? Are you sleeping? Are, 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 how, how are things going? Are you active, are you growing? Are you, are you challenging yourself? Um, one of my goals is to think, how can you improve what you're doing? How can you set yourself up? How can you put your career on the rocket ship? Um, how many people here are members of a PMO or there's a PMO at their organization? Many, many. How many people are within your PMO? How many project managers? you got one. No fair. And anyone know how many are within your organization? 10, 100, 1,000? 20-some. 20-some, yep. So one of my questions is, you know, you've got 20-some project managers. How do you stand out as one of those 27? You know, there's a, there's a PMO manager, there's an executive, there's a boss. How, how do you make it so that you're the next person in line uh, when that person moves up into the CEO or when there's promotion or they win the lottery or retire? Um, what kind of behaviors are you going to do uh, to set yourself apart and, uh, and demonstrate leadership? How do you view yourself as a project manager? How do you view project managers? Um, are you a leader? Are you just kind of a, an IT worker that's just not effective and just moping around and getting, trying to get your work done? Um, are you a robot? You know, are you just 
doing the same thing every day, the same old thing as everybody else, generating more, you know, digging the next ditch or whatever. Unless you're an excavation company, that's a good thing. Um, you know, how can you become a hero? How can you, uh, I like the expression project hero. You know, project manager. It's like you tell your kids what you do, or how do you tell your parents what you do? I'm a project hero. You know, <laughs> project manager is so boring. I mean, you, you can take a project that's, turn, that's, that's failing and turn it around. There's a huge risk, and, and you can avoid it. Uh, you're leading, you're a leader as a project manager. You, you know, you, you need to think about the idea of being a leader uh, as well. And, and that's, I mean, everyone that works for you, the success or failure of the project, you know, people, project managers stress, worry about the failure of the project. And it's up to, you know, you, you own that, you wear it, you, you feel it. Um, but everyone on the team, you know, you're responsible for those people as well. I mean, that's their job every day. And you could be, you know, you could be condemning them to the death march, so to speak. You know, I mean, if you sign up for a bad project or you don't stand up, you know, everyone's working in weekends and stuff. I mean, do you own that? So I, I like the idea of how do you become a project hero? How do you view yourself as more of a leader? And how can you separate yourself? And I, I feel that creativity is one tool in your toolbox that you can use. If you learn how to exercise that muscle, that creativity muscle, uh, you can differentiate yourself. And you can, uh, I think you can become a project hero. Uh, again, here's a picture of standing out in the crowd. Um, being a leadership. So some of this stuff I've already covered. Lead, you know, being a leader. Where are you in the boat? Well, down the water, I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. <clears throat> Oops, we got a commercial break here. Um, interrupting this. I have a few times in the talk tonight when I want to take kind of a tangent and go off on a little bit of a, I'm calling it a commercial break, but it's not selling anything. Uh, and one of the things I was trying to do tonight with the presentation, and you'll notice from my first few slides, is that I'm not, uh, I'm not using bullets. Um, try to do this as kind of a way to communicate and convey information clearly. Um, I tried it for a, few, or for a few presentations and some were kind of easy. I had some very technical presentations with a lot of data and I think it drove my boss crazy that I did no bullets and no numbers in the presentation. But <laughs> when I pulled that off, I think I felt like I, I believed in it. So. Uh, so here's a pile of bullets. <laughs> here's the only bullets you're going to have in this presentation. So, uh, but you know, think about it. Uh, you know, what happens? Think about the standard advice you hear on giving a presentation. Uh, you know, seven to nine, no more than seven to nine per page. Uh, hand out some handouts and things like that. And what happens? You go in there. And everyone instantly starts reading the handouts or starts reading the page and they're not paying attention to you. Worst case, the presenter is reading the presentation off his own bullets. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have a net here. I have no bullets. I can't read them. I have to just try to communicate what I want to communicate. So I'm going to see how that works out today and uh, hopefully it'll be effective. Um, think about famous, the best speeches and presentations you've ever heard. Famous orators. A famous speech here by Forrest Gump. Uh, do any of the most famous presentations or speeches that you can possibly remember have PowerPoint? I mean, Abraham Lincoln? I mean, that, that's not fair. Uh, Al Gore. Yeah, there you go, Al Gore. That's a good one, effective use. Uh, maybe Steve Jobs? I don't know. So, again, try it. I'm just trying to show this as a possible way to do a creative presentation, a different way of doing it, a different way of communicating. And again, if you're PMO, everyone has to give a presentation at the end of the year, you come in. Uh, we had this, where I worked before, every, every project manager had to do a presentation at the end of the year as part of their individual goals. Uh, and everyone did their presentation, and I was about ready to do mine, and, and my manager had to leave, so he, 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 let up, he, he left. I gave my presentation, it was all pictures. Uh, and then he came back at the end and said, okay, I, I'm sorry I missed it, but why don't you just email me your presentation? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go over it. 
<laughs> and everyone in the group laughed, and no one knew why, so I did. I shot them the email, said, here it is. You know, let me know if you have any questions, and, uh, and uh, I never heard from them. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci, uh, just, just here to remind me of a quote uh, from Leonardo da Vinci is that uh, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So when you're communicating as a project manager, the challenge is to make it more clear, make it more simple. It's easy to keep adding things and piling things in and adding more bullet points and, and putting more information in. The challenge and the differentiation is to cut to the chase and to give the true message or concisely communicate clearly and not to obfuscate everything with extra details. And if you really want to do a presentation with no bullets, you have to have one slide with kittens. <laughs> it's, it's just a rule, I don't know why. Um, this poor girl is stuck to the pole here. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about was warnings and <laughs> negative things about creativity. I'm not here to say that creativity is a silver bullet or it should be used for every part of project management. There are definitely times when it's not a good idea. So I wanted to cover some of the don'ts and some of my warnings about creativity uh, within project management before I got to the uh, bread and butter, the benefits of, of creativity. So here are the warnings. Um, hmm. Sometimes if you're trying to be a creative project manager, you get too creative with what you're doing, uh, you will go off and start performing other roles. I'm not talking about being so creative as a project manager that you're not being a project manager. I mean, the PMBOK uh, is the standard. It defines the boundaries of project management. It says when you've gone off, when you're going, you know, hey, you're going off into management or HR, people management, HR, those aren't project management. You've wandered off. In, in IT, if you're being, you know, you could be too creative and non-PM-ish if you're, maybe you're doing the testing or maybe you're doing, you're writing the specs or you're doing business analysis. Well, I'm not saying that you should wander. I'm not talking about not doing project management. Your, your organization may choose to have you perform other roles, but I, you don't want to wander off and now you're not a PM anymore or you're doing art or you're doing something, something different. So, or maybe in construction, you're doing safety instead of project management. So don't wander off of, out of project management. <laughs> Um, this person is very frustrated. Um, it can be frustrating if every single thing you receive from a project manager is different. Every status report is different. Every, everything is, doesn't look the same or you always start with a white piece of paper. It can be a waste of time. And there's a benefit to standards. There's a benefit to consistency. So you have to be careful as a project manager if you're trying to be creative that you don't go too far with it. You know, everything's different. You know, always reinventing the wheel. You know, that's kind of a, that can be to lead you to a bad place. Uh, this person's kind of turned upside down or just looking at things differently. I don't know. Um, I guess my kind of warning on this is just the idea is if you go too far overboard with creativity, the results of that aren't recognizable as project management anymore. I mean, I'm not talking about going, going nuts here. Um, Mad Men is a popular TV show. You can just wound up its fifth season last night. But uh, it's, it's a show about an advertising agency that's doing creative work. Um, and I wanted to give the disclaimer or the asterisk that this talk is not about how to do creative projects or how to create things. I'm, it's a subtle difference, but I'm not talking about how to innovate. A company wants to innovate or do innovative projects. There might be different techniques and tools you use, but that's a different presentation. Call me next year. 
so just wanted to give a warning that this isn't uh, this isn't about how to do innovative how to innovate as a company. All right, uh, I think I've hit enough of the warnings and the dire the dire indications, all the blue circles here, and now I want to hit the benefits of or what I perceive to be the benefits of creativity in project management. Uh, and different process areas where communication is valuable. Um, first of all, communication. Of course, communication. I mean, as a project manager, I know they always say, what, 80% of your time should be spent communicating, something like that. Um, so finding ways to be creative with your communication, I think, can help help make you effective. But communication is a key is a key area uh, where it can be a benefit. Um, for example, using lots of color uh, charts, graphs to show information. I think in the Ford talk you said it's very effective to show kind of a, a burn up or a thermometer that was going up as, as you were installing servers and that, that was compelling. Um, so the use of color, the use of charts, use of pictures, a picture's worth a thousand words, so I'm filling more in these slides than I would if I filled them up with bullets, I think. Um, so the idea of, of color, I think also when you communicate, also the idea of being concise. Um, I really like a one-page document. If you have a document, trust me, if you're communicating to senior management or to others, uh, include an executive summary, include a one-page summary. If you cannot boil it down to the key uh, point, or you make some very eloquent argument about your status, and it's on the fifth page of the report, you know, it's going to get lost. The message is going to get lost. Um, my company one time went through and read it all their templates as one page. Um, just, just from that standpoint. So I'm not saying don't do the diligence or don't have the details or don't have, you know, don't do your homework or give everything short shrift. I'm saying, you know, be able to communicate things cons concisely. Consider, uh, consider boiling things down to one page. Um, talked about status reports, talked about uh, communication. I've got, uh, this is a little bit of, of a slight interruption again. One of the things that interests me as a professional project manager is just project management in popular culture. Uh, so I always kind of notice when there's some mention of project management or things like that in popular culture. So I've got a movie clip I want to show that I think illustrates uh, giving a status report. Um, one example of project management in popular culture, I think the TV show The Apprentice, that was one show. When that came on, you know, they, they, someone, they had to do a task, someone would be the project manager, uh, and that person received, you know, disproportionate blame, <laughs> if it failed, as well as, you know, extra praise if it succeeded, which is, of course, the life of the project manager. Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to take a, just a slight break and show this clip that I think uh, illustrates project management status report concept here. So hopefully I can cue this up and it'll, it'll all work. It might not. Correct, Commander. 
and he is most displeased with your apparent lack of progress. We shall have a lot of efforts. I hope so, Commander, for your sake. The Emperor is not as forgiving as I am. So well, that's giving a status report to a tough customer. <laughs> one, uh, one illustration that just hits home to me about uh, the state of creativity as project managers is, uh, to me, is the stoplight. Uh, the stoplight. Uh, to me, it's like project managers think that's the greatest thing. I mean, introducing the stoplight was uh, is a major creativity for project managers. So keep it up. That's good. Uh, I more. think it's good. But uh, you know, it's a clear it's a it's a clear picture. It gives it, people instantly understand more than three sentences of well, we think maybe it's yellow or you're red. Uh, people understand that clearly. Um, so, I just wanted to ask, maybe, uh, maybe a brainstorm, or if anyone has any ideas, can you think of any other images or pictures or concepts that you uh, that would tell you something about project status uh, besides a stoplight? Anyone? Yeah. A barometer. Barometer. There you go. Good one. Any more? Pardon? Smiley face. Smiley face? Good one. Any more? Alright. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Or thumbs up, thumbs down. Here, here's one checkered flag. Does that mean something? That means I could tell you something. Uh, flames. That's <laughs> <laughs> not your project. Uh, glass half full. Or half empty. There's more than one, one way to look at the current status. Maybe the emperor doesn't share your positive outlook or whatever but that was. Oh, I hope that's not your project. Um, communication. So again, another aspect of communication, uh, ways to be creative. Um, sometimes you think about just different modes of communicating. Sometimes to get something heard, or you know, maybe your first status report was read, was was read by everyone. Your second was fine, but now you've got this funny feeling that no one's reading it anymore. Uh, or different ways to communicate, different modes of communication. I really enjoyed uh, again the Ford presentation, uh, uh, how they were using some of the new media, SharePoint, and some other uh, some other technologies to communicate among the team. Um, text message. Calling someone, instant messaging. Um, you know, when something's important, you can't just, I mean, we've all sat there with a junior person and you're trying to go get status from them and you're saying, How's that coming? And then, well, I sent someone an email a few days ago and I haven't heard anything. Mm. And they wash their hands of it. I mean, okay, you sent them an email, now did you go follow up with them? Did you walk by their cube? Did you send them a text? Did you call their home? Are you sitting on their trunk at the end, you know, the hood of their car at the end of the day? Or at least schedule a meeting with them so there's some end in sight of this complete impasse. You know, people will ask a question. So, I mean, I think just trying to... I mean, you know how it is as a project manager. You've got to work past these roadblocks and sometimes you have to train other folks, uh, people on your team, to not be satisfied with, oh, I haven't heard anything. It's critical path for the project. You can't wait for the person to respond. So not everyone reads their email. Or they don't read all of them. Um, this is a transparent car. Um, the idea is transparency. The same kind of thing. Kind of a goal to strive for is you know you could call transparency in your project, where you communicate everything so frequently and so often. Everything is documented. All issues are out there. And you know, whether it's in a team site and it's always available. Um, there's burn down charts, people know where you are, 
you know, if, if you can achieve kind of a transparency, that means you're really doing your job as a PM and communicating. Um, it's when things are cloudy or no one knows, or are we over budget, or what are the issues, or what are we going to do about that issue, or when are we going live? Those questions come up, and then you know you've undercommunicated, or communication isn't strong enough. Uh, meetings. Uh, <laughs> this is a boring meeting. Picture of a boring meeting. Um, again, meetings which are sometimes the bane of IT or people's jobs if they they don't if if they get too bogged down with them. Um, again, that's another opportunity for you you maybe to spice in or mix in some creativity um, or eliminate meetings completely like the four team is trying to do. I like that um, as much as you can. Um, there's different ways to do it. Um, I keep saying um. One of the analogies I like to use, uh, I find that technical resources and people that I'm trying to manage always want to dive into the details dive way down to the, to the nitty-gritty details and they have a hard time staying at a high level. You know, try to have a meeting where you go over the 20 issues in a project that's a half-hour meeting. <laughs> you just want to list the 20 issues and describe them. That doesn't mean you want to solve them right now. Or you put together, you try to have a planning session with someone and you say we need to design the network. Well, all of a sudden, they start going up to the board and drawing everything. No, we don't need to design the network right now. We just need to say that we need to do it. And so I sometimes will use the analogy of just like a, a thin ice across the pond and say, hey, look, we really have to get through this. You know, we have a half hour. We've got to cover this whole spectrum of topics. So we need to like run across this pond like a frozen pond. If we stop somewhere, we're going to break through the ice and fall in and we'll never get out and we'll never make it to the other side. Uh, so that analogy. Just the idea of creative ways and making sure that you are officiating your meetings and getting through them. Sometimes you have to cut people off or put things on the parking lot, table discussions, um, aggressively sometimes. Uh, even to senior managers, probably especially to them, I'd like to you know, go off on a tangent or people that are going different directions. If you are effectively making sure that you accomplish what you need in your meeting, people will appreciate it. You know, it might be a little bit of a surprise when you say, we're not talking about that now, that's a different meeting, and you take it, to the, take it off. But people will appreciate that. Uh, throw the flag. You know, if someone does something that's, that's wrong in the meeting, you, 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 know, you say, hey, you know, I'm throwing the flag. We're going to talk about what, we're going to assume the servers get here on time. And we're not talking about if they don't get here on time. We're talking about if the service get on time. So, I mean, throw the flag. I literally have a flag. And I'll throw it. You know, with developers, whatever, throw it on the conference room table. <laughs> throw on the flag. You know, you're off topic. That's a different meeting. We're not talking about that. Um, you know, I think I had it in my coat pocket, but if you're doing international projects, you might have to just, you know, whip out the red card. <laughs> It's international. You might not understand the football <laughs> analogy, so you go with the most popular sport. But again, that's something to break things up a little bit. Um, your meeting locations. You know, have a walking meeting. Uh, have a meeting outside. Uh, this is the top of our office building in Grand Rapids. It's downtown Grand Rapids. Uh, you know, uh, we were doing a agile development project and we had a daily stand-up meeting and we wanted to keep it 15 minutes or less and so we I had the meetings up on the roof we went through the winter had the meetings up on the roof we were done with those meetings <laughs> in the fall it was 15 20 minutes whatever you know February four minutes man status everything okay 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 issue okay all right good go back you know yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you need to uh, you need to make sure you're incenting that somehow. Now we had pretty good attendance when I went around and grabbed everyone and brought them up there. But you know, it's just a different idea, or maybe it's something you're trying. Uh, brainstorming again. That's another brainstorming is kind of a bread and butter thing for creativity. I mean, it kind of generates creativity. Uh, it's a technique that you can get good at. I have this picture of an avalanche. 
I just like the concept of a idea avalanche. I call it, you know, so many ideas that just keep coming and then eventually they build up enough momentum and you've achieved an idea avalanche. It's just, to me, it's just a little bit more intense than a brainstorm, something like that. So, uh, um, rewards and recognition. Again, this is people's jobs. You're leading people. You're, you're trying to be a manager. You're trying to uh, provide re reward and recognition. You're trying to motivate people uh, to achieve or maybe exceed schedules and things like that. So, you know, rewards and recognition uh, is a great area for uh, creativity. Uh, in fact, this is my first, uh, this is what, what I was going to give my first area for a contest. I don't know how this will work. But if you have an idea for a reward or something that was creative uh, that your company did, um, you could text me or email me uh, what that idea was. And if anyone does, I do have a giveaway here, but uh, I have no idea if this would work. Does anyone, uh, anyone have an idea of an idea that, uh, for a reward or recognition that you're, you might have done or heard done in the company? Anyone? Going for your, going for your one. <laughs> Go ahead. Monthly recognition for good behaviors, you know, strong. Uh, uh, okay, so keep it. Nail it down somehow. Yeah. I need to get creative. Yeah. I'll start shouting. Sorry, I'm sorry. Anyway, there are people get recognized for different good attributes, and then there's usually a monthly winner, and then the monthly winner gets a good parking spot for the next month. Oh, so the parking spot, the, uh, the closest one. What's the typical walk for someone that doesn't win? <laughs> <laughs> we have a All really right. long parking lot. All right, you get a prize. Oh. Your best is back. This is just a set of. Uh, colored uh, whiteboard markers, so uh, in case you want to add some color to your whiteboard while you're up there doing it. I had a boss who used to let uh, the top uh, person borrow a jet ski for a <laughs> Wow, that's good, that's good. Alright, I'm going to go with the, uh, I'll go with the other one, he gets another set. Anyone <laughs> else? Anyone else? Go ahead. We do uh, where uh, peers can recognize you. <clears throat> we do movie theater tickets. Oh. That are redeemable. Uh -huh. They're on a website. They're print out my certificate. That's cool. That's good. I like that. All right, we're getting down to the smaller ones now. Mini set. Oh, mini set. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Rewards and recognition. Different ways. Ice cream. Ice cream. There you go. And I get the ice cream. He wanted those markers. One more. All right, I'm out of gifts, but anyone else have any other ideas? <laughs> 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 IBM, so it's not. Yeah. <laughs> but when they would give out rewards for the best winning teams, they would literally do it at, you know, a stadium. Shea mm -hmm. Stadium, Yankee Stadium, what have you. Cool. And the team would come out onto the field, everyone there from IBM land, in the stands, up on the big jog tron, mm -hmm. that family, and they would cheer. <laughs> That's, That's really it. cool. No money, mm -hmm. no things, but they said that was worth more, getting that kind of recognition. Of course, all your family or friends are there that right. get to go to Yankee Stadium or Shea Stadium or the Meadowlands, whatever it might be. But uh, that showed a lot of uh, teams for yeah. Good one. Uh, at my company last summer, uh, they, had an, uh, they had an OST summer day or whatever, and one of the activities was hot air ballooning. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, another activity they had was skeet shooting. And I remember there was, there was a guy who said, yeah, it was my second day on the job, and I'm walking through the woods with a loaded gun. <laughs> A different company, so I hope they don't uh, buy them. I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's 
see, you've got different people up there combing their hair, brushing their teeth, whatever. Uh, concept that I like, I've heard talked about uh, that vexes project managers is the idea of project hygiene, I like to call it project hygiene. Uh, and that's the basic did people do their timesheets? Did people update their tasks? Uh, did everyone fill out their status reports? The basic hygiene of that flow of information that you need as a project manager. Um, you just need these things to get done. And different cultures, uh, different companies are good about it. Some places you don't have to say any. Other places you've got to go around and babysit and get everyone every week. And that can be uh, irritating, right? Uh, so, what are some different ways or some creative ways to help with your project uh, project hygiene? Um, there's one approach. Uh, I mean, you start yelling at everybody. Get those in. We need them in. Uh, you know, but that only goes so far, right? Uh, eventually, uh, that gets old. Um, you don't hire them. What? You don't hire that guy to come in? Oh, yeah, I hire that guy. I hire him. Hire the guy to come in and break some kneecaps. But uh, I got another uh, clip here, another movie clip that I think shows a project manager trying to uh, trying to establish project hygiene. But uh, you'll have to tell me if you think he's being an effective project manager or if you like, like I was going after it here. Hello, Peter. Uh, we have sort of a problem here. Yeah, you apparently didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. I, I forgot. Mm, yeah. You see, we're putting the cover sheets on all TPS reports now before they go out. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. I just uh, forgot. But uh, it's not shipping out till tomorrow, so there's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> if you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. And uh, I'll go ahead and make sure you get another copy of that memo. Okay? Yeah, no, I, I, I have the memo. I've got it. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I was trying to get, I was trying to get things done, but... Uh, donuts, right? Old school. I, one project I had, I had something that I just called the donut criteria. And it was just something that we did at the status meetings like once a week. And I would set what this, and it was something that changed every week. Uh, but maybe it was everyone gets their status reports in, you know, by 8 o'clock on Monday. That's the donut criteria for this week. And if everyone did, you know, the next meeting, you know, you bring in donuts. And then they're feeling good about themselves, but then you change the donut criteria, so you change it to something else. You know, maybe now we gotta get, we're behind schedule, we gotta get back on track, you know. Whatever it is, just something, some little thing that helps uh, motivate teams as well. Um, some serious advice that I have uh, that I like to give to beginning project managers. As a project manager in my career, uh, the feedback, and scores that I received and the demand for my services uh, is directly in proportion to the quality of food that you provide. <laughs> I have not learned that. That's one rule you need to learn. Uh, it's directly proportional. Do not forget that at your own risk. Whatever you buy at Sam's Club and bring to the war room will come back to you tenfold. In other ways, uh, pizza. Uh, you know, you bring in pizza. I have a rule: no pizza. I mean, it's just pizza again. You know, it's like almost gets worn out. So, again, the quality. If the other project managers are bringing pizza, you're. You know, what are you bringing in? No. <laughs> Uh, positioning yourself, demand for you know. There's two projects and three project managers. You know. Um, uh, this is a picture of a child that's brought in a, a small frog to show and tell um, for school that day, uh, and that's just another example of, of an idea for 
kind of motivating a project team or project accountability, or I don't even consider it hygiene, but um, setting up accountability. If, uh, I had a show and tell meeting basically for my project team. Say you have a project that's like six weeks, everything needs to be done. You got six weeks. Well, set a show and tell meeting out there for three weeks or four weeks out. And all you have to do is schedule that meeting, explain that it's a show and tell meeting, everyone's going to bring what they have and show it to everyone else during that meeting, whether it's developers showing their code, pictures of the racks, I don't know, um, uh, and show what you have. And now you've all of a sudden, you've established this accountability and this point out there, and you didn't have to tell them to come in and work the weekend, it's beautiful. I mean, they know they're going to come and they're going to have to show it's, uh, how far they've gotten, and, and that's just another little technique to use. Um, here's a, a roadblock, a road closed. Again, as a project manager, one of the key processes or key functions that you do is identify risks and deal with issues that come up, and creativity is a key tool for you in these situations. Uh, avoiding a roadblock, working around things, um, just not accepting no for an answer as a PM sometimes, and then considering the creative ideas. Um, we had a project that we were going live with. It was a, a big system implementation uh, at a warehouse, and it was going to be in six months. But the new software required us to completely renumber the warehouse. Every location, every aisle, every position had to be renumbered because of the new software. And the concern was that was going to put everyone in chaos. 300 workers going in the very next day for the first time, they have no idea where anything is, what locations are, what aisle everything is. They're looking at labels they don't know. And we were going to sh the concern was we were going to shut everything down and we wouldn't be able to meet our deadlines and, and uh, deliver to the customer. Um, what we ended up doing, or someone had the idea of, well, hey, the new system requires us to have these uh, new number of locations. It's going to cause chaos uh, during the go-live. Everyone will be learning the new system and the new numbers. But they actually took those new numbers and put them in the old system. So they went ahead and changed their old system. And six months before we went live, we transitioned into the new numbering scheme. So again, separating those events, trying to reduce the risk of go-live. Let's, you know, and so everyone was thinking that the project was to implement this new system, but we went ahead and changed the old system just to make the, you know, the cutover and the go-live easier. So just a different way of, of, of negotiating things. Uh, working your way around uh, the roadmaps, or working your way around the mazes, not getting caught. Can you think, can you think outside the box? I know it's kind of a cliche. Um, sometimes the project goes off course, uh, you're not meeting your schedule, you're not meeting your plan, uh, and that can require creativity as well. Um, sometimes you, I don't know if it's creativity or you just have to be aware that things have changed and deal with reality, like dealing with things for what they are and not being so committed to your project plan. Well, that was right, and so you, you just drive and you're wasting your time driving to that project plan, but not seeing that things have changed. Uh, there's an expression, there's a saying, it's one of my favorite quotes that I love, that, that I think of, and this picture reminds me of it. Uh, you know, these explorers are, are exploring the new land or whatever, and looking at their map, trying to figure things out. But the expression is, uh, you know, if the terrain and the map differ, go with the terrain. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have that situation. You know, don't just blindly follow the map. You know, maybe even now it's like a GPS. You know, turn left. No. Or, or you know, don't walk off. Don't walk off that cliff because the map says it's not there. Uh, you know, maybe he did that. But, uh, you know, failure. What about project failures? I mean. Here's a fundamental question. Uh, you know, can a failed project have a good project manager? Yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, sometimes when a project's failing is when you might need to pull all the stops or try different things. I mean, what do you got to lose? Uh, you, 
you're going to fail. So <laughs> try something. Uh, one example I have uh, had a project uh, where we were going to go live, and uh, we were maybe two weeks away from go live, and I was there was a lot of risk. You know, the, the, there's tons of bugs. We hadn't finished all the development. We hadn't done enough testing. There was just a ton of risk. Um, but, you know, it was go, go, go. We got to hit the date. We got to hit the date. Got to hit the date. Um, and so I scheduled the meeting with a, uh, with a business owner, you know, the customer, of, the business owner of the project, and said, okay, we're going to write a letter uh, in this meeting. We're writing a letter to our customers, you know, apologizing for how bad everything was, you know, after go live with the service, you know. So what are we going to say to them? You know, let's write this. Let's write this letter. Uh, should we print a thousand copies of these? Ten thousand? Get ready. We need the customer mailing addresses because uh, we're going to have to send this out. You know, so it's kind of a wake-up call to say, you know, even as a PM, you know, think of a creative way, you know, to send that message if you have to. Um, tools. This is a this is a Swiss Army knife. So what's in your toolbox as a project manager? Or, have you introduced anything new, any new tools lately? Are you still using the same things as a PM uh, that you were 10 years ago, five years ago? Unless you're a new PM, it's all new. Uh, you know, you're still using the Walkman, the cassette player to listen to music. Um, one tool I like to recommend is just mind mapping. Uh, I had even suggested giving my talk on mind mapping because uh, I'm really interested in it and I, and I like mind maps. Um, so that's one concrete piece of advice I'll give you is if you want to increase your creativity, street credibility, or, or have a tool that's creative for a PM and you're not using mind map, go ahead and use a mind mapping tool. Go ahead and try one. Um, I, I did this whole presentation on a mind map before I, before I did it in this. Uh, it's great for organizing your thoughts. Um, one. The head of our company was having a meeting to talk about our project management consulting that we do. And so I wanted to be prepared for this meeting. And so I created a little mind map of just my ideas and laid them out uh, and brought that to the meeting. Well, you know, other people, some had prepared, some had thought about it, some just rolled into the meeting and I pulled out my mind map. And all of a sudden the whole meeting, I was leading the meeting then, and it, it was all around that mind map and we enhanced it and we used it and he used that and took it forward. So that's just an example. I mean, here's a copy of it. I mean, so just, again, great for brainstorming ideas, put some things together, and, and go from there. Uh, what about your resume or your job search? How do you stand out in the crowd? It's important to stand out among the 20 other people in your PMO. Uh, it's very important to stand out. Right when you're one resume on the 50 resume pile on someone's desk, and you're trying to you're trying to find a position as a project manager. Um, my resume uh, is one page, uh, so I did the same thing. One page. I've got to get this down to one page. Who reads all five pages of a you know my my five page resume? Who reads it? Um, and my resume has a Gantt chart, eight pictures, I think maybe six. And a mind map. Um, so, well, I just brought it up here. So, just an example. Got the Gantt chart for my work history. Got icons for projects that I did, and kind of a mind map skills. So, one page. So, again, if you get that and you had 20 resumes and you had to send yours out, which one? I'm not saying you're going to get the job. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to bring this thing home here. Uh, uh, adapt or die. Time to adapt. Inject some creativity into your career. Inject some creativity into project management. Separate yourself from the crowd. Become a project hero. Uh, that's kind of my that's kind of my message. Is that creativity is a tool for that? I might not have. It was a soft presentation. I didn't have a lot of concrete in here, but uh, is there any questions? Did that resume give you a job? Yeah. Want a copy? 
acid? This is the first time you're doing a presentation without bullets? I've done so, this is the first time I've done it to like an external audience. Uh, my company had we had to do like internal presentations, so I've done like presentations within the company and project project review presentations and again I've done a few where hey it's gone pretty well with just no bullets and pictures. I liked it so I thought, alright, I'm gonna challenge myself here and see see if I can do it for a whole sixty minutes or whatever. Any other questions? Where, where do you uh, research your, uh, your visuals? Where do you good question. Your That's a good question. Uh, I use Google Images uh, <laughs> just to look for things. Um, it depends on what you're using it for. If it's an internal project or if it's just an internal presentation, you can do that. Uh, some of these images were stock that I purchased off of like, iStock.com, or you know, because I don't want to just use someone else's copyrighted. Uh, images and things like that. So, um, and if you really have trouble finding one, you can just grab your camera sometimes and take a picture, like a concrete block or something like that. So, there's other ways to get uh, images if you need to, but it's on the web. Okay. I raise my voice up a few decibels. Stay away from the microphone. <laughs> um, I've been involved with PMI for eight years. And in the eight years, I've been involved with symposiums. You have 12 to 14 speakers. I've been involved with dinner meetings. I've been to a number of them. At least 100 presentations. I've had the PowerPoint, had the bullets, I've had them read. We've had presenters that haven't put out anything. They go out there and they add live their entire presentation. And they've done well. The first time in eight years, I've seen a presentation without, without a bullet, all pictures. And I thought it was very, very exciting and innovative. Yep. So thank you again for that presentation and telling us to be innovative in a way we work. Thanks again. <laughs> On behalf of PMI GLC, I'd like to give you a, a light gift here. Thank you. And just a reminder, uh, no July presentation. Look forward to our open house announcements. They'll be set for August and back in September. We will see you again. Safe travels on your way home today. <laughs>